Uh, how gracefully is it going to handle, say, me playing with Ven or so, Jordan? It's going to uh, help. The it, Atlantic listen, Ocean. Pedro, I, you didn't read this. It has a rollback Nesca. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. That was a good one. And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ven, joined every week by men up north. Who was a little bit sniffly, a little bit not sneezy, just leaking a little bit. One Jordan Swang. Yes. And the man who's been driving around town. If you've been Cambridge, you've seen him cruising in his hot hatch. <laughs> Pedro <laughs> Mateus. You know that things get an extra spoiler. We all it do. Is, is raced up Mazda. Yeah. Like. <laughs> and together it with you, shot around the dynamic. <laughs> helping us for Okay, Voltron. It is a see, you're gonna, he's gonna cut you, man. <laughs> yeah, I, no, it, it is the sports cr- version. I think that says rice does it's gonna be on the outside. That's, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're, we're, we're just gonna have, have have a race. You and I, me, me and my wife, and our orange Subaru, and you and your hot hatch Mazda. We'll see who wins. <laughs> It's, it's they're they're not particularly fast cars. They're just light for what they are. They uh, that was like the big thing when they were first released. Is like oh yeah no it's like the Fiesta ST. In fact, they share the exact same chassis, but it's two hundred kilos lighter than the Fiesta ST. It's like oh, okay. and and that's where Pedro <laughs> Mateus comes in. <laughs> I I I only weigh uh, ninety five kilos, so yeah. <laughs> Once up, once new. What is going on? I, I'm playing around with a bunch of stuff. I got like all the uh, script and everything written out for that Kona card. If you paid attention, I think last week, week before, whenever that thing showed up, that was an interesting experience because I think like a lot of people uh, were all guilty of like at least buying, maybe not capture equipment, but we were familiar with buying enterprise, like old server stuff and playing with it, right? It was like always... This is the same equivalent of that, except it's professional broadcast video here. So that's going to be a fun video. It's going to be a little bit interesting. But I do have something I'm trying tonight. Normally, when we're doing these shows live, back here in the rack, these two boxes are lit up. Now, the top one is Mr. Compeller Pants, and it's taking care of all the leveling and stuff that we need for the live stream and the podcast. And below that's a de Now, my dream has been to not rely on 40 plus year old hardware to do our shows. That's not fun. It's not a great feel. Like if that breaks, uh oh, we're gonna have problems. So what I've been trying to do, and I have had a couple of attempts at this over the uh, years is do an in the box mix. And I got some new software, open source software, mind you, that I stumbled across because no amount of like searching for this type of stuff has ever revealed it. But I found it. We're running it right now. It's kind of emulating what the compeller does with keeping everything leveled. And, you know, I had to massage it a bit. And we got a... I, I like the results. I like the results. We're going to listen to it, find out how it actually sounds on Sunday. But it's extraordinarily heavy to run computationally. It takes a lot of resources compared to, like, this 40-year-old analog computer that's just sitting back here in the rack. It's like, derp, 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 I just do this stuff. Uh, that... Uh, that's pretty much me. We watched the Star Wars thing, Jordan and I did. Mm-hmm. It's got lightsabers in it. Disney. Are, 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 are we going to start up a new a new podcast, Jedi and shit? Jedi's and shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> how dare the you? It's companion podcast of wizards Dude. and shit. You messed up, man, because episode three is just going to be the end shit part now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> episode three, Matt Smith comes and he starts making some inappropriate advances on like all of the characters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the David. Oh, never mind. There, too, too, too much. No, it's, Chris, it's, Chris, it's Christopher Eccleston this time around. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that would be interesting. How about you, Jordan? O- outside of uh, getting the sniffles, yeah, get, getting getting sick sucks. Buying got, video cards. Ugh, man, I wish. But we'll we'll be, we'll be talking about that in the in the news segment. But like, goddamn, everything's so goddamn expensive. Now it's been it's been a quiet week. I got this is the last week of of weight loss. So mon- mon- Monday morning, I get to eat again. But for now, I'm I'm all I'm all hungry. What is going to be your uh, like meal? Um... I have I haven't decided yet. Mm. I, I, you got I, options I, I, though, right? I I do I do. Um, I 
I think I need to go grocery shopping first. I need to like expand expand the limits of my horizon, or at least expand the limits of my refrigerator. Oh man! Oh yeah! Oh, here's another exciting news: our internet bill went up. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Rent seeking assholes. <laughs> what, are you gonna give me? You're gonna give me more bandwidth or more more speed? Fuck no. Uh. Uh-uh. Nope. In fact, you're gonna get less. It's just a courtesy increase. You're like, we're just gonna put another four bucks at this point. And like at this point, like, like oh, <laughs> just, just, just what are you gonna you do? We're just about stop you. having internet. <laughs> um, it has went up like thirty bucks, which was already ludicrously expensive. But like, it's been a, went up like thirty bucks in the past four years. That's, that's not too bad, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad when it's the same service, man. Nah, I suppose. Right? And you, you're, you're, uh, are you still like sub four hundred megabit, or did you get that? Uh... No, business has been for a couple of years now. It's a uh, six hundred thirty-five. Okay, that's then. Then that's not that's not too bad. Plus, you get the yeah. The uh, I have fourteen VoIP lines. Uh, <laughs> a bunch of email addresses. Uh, ah, so you open up the LGC call center. <laughs> we could, man. Value could. add. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, in all fairness, I have a gig of stuff for a company that we'll never use. So there is yeah. that. Pedro Mateus, the man who just drives around town now. <laughs> Doing donuts I, I, and parking I do make lots. up excuses to, to, to go places, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, going, it's, it's, it's been mostly driving is mostly working uh i haven't uh, if you've been looking at my steam account wondering what games i've been playing not many <laughs> in fact today i managed to sit down and play a couple of rounds of uh, vampire survivors because there's been a few updates that i haven't played so i've just been trying to unlock the new stuff and uh yeah that's um <laughs> That, that that's been the extent of my gaming throughout this week it was not have, have, you, <laughs> have you convinced nori to try out the new couch co-op uh no she uh, she was looking at me playing it uh today it's like no i could never get into that it's like all right fine <laughs> yeah that power survivor is like one of those things you look like you, you derive joy from that I'm like yes I'm like cool all right yeah all right i'm not, not gonna fight you well, yeah, it, it tickles the, dark the, the side of my brain <laughs> Yeah, it's a slot machine, the video game. Um, yeah, Sk- yeah. Uh, Skinner box. You know, pr- press the button, get without, the pleasure without pleasure actual with the money. Yes, mm, <laughs> that is a thing. All right, so uh, I don't want to use the word the Skinner box and horse in the same sentence, Jordan. <laughs> How about pleasure box and horse? It's the Steam. What eggs? Update of the week. <laughs> I'm not sure that's better. <laughs> It's most certainly worse. Are you but trying you know to could ins- be worse? Installing listen, the horse man. on your Steam Deck. Just you, I, I remember, no kids. Nay means no. Pleasure box means no. Guess um, <laughs> Bazite, Bazite, Bazite. One point oh. Look at that vapor theme rolling by on our screens right now. So for audio listeners, maybe you bought a Steam Deck, like. You know the six other people that did, and you just kind of felt you just got that feeling, and you're not really getting that real authentic Linux experience, you know, because that Steam Deck just kind of works, man. You cut it on and it plays like this isn't Linux. I've been sold a lie this whole time. The audio even works. Well, here's something to slap on it for a little bit of weekend tinkering. As it on deck is ready to give you something to play with, and it's a lot of cool stuff. It really is. I mean, this thing out of the box is a replacement operating system for your Steam Deck. It ships with Lupus pre-installed. It's got support for 32 gigabytes of RAM. You're like, wait. You know, like, yes, mad people are out there soldering on additional memory RAM to your deck. It's got the patched Mesa for the game scope fixes. And here's an interesting one. It's got the ability, unlike a Steam Deck, running the Arch to dual boot into Windows. Which, I don't know why you would want to do that, but that's kind of neat. So- it's also a little risky because, you know, that window, un- unless they have some guards against that, that Windows install is going to try and overwrite your bootloader mm-hmm. every time. Um, yeah, and um, a lot of the software stack is kind of just like a mashup of SteamOS, PopOS, and Nobara. It has like the System76 scheduler. It does the, um, it, it's, it looks like it's based on Fedora so that it can bring in Eggies patches for like Rockem and all of that stuff. Um, it, yeah, it'll boot up on your deck in gamepad UI mode. It comes with the NVIDIA drivers pre-installed. So if you want to run it on a desktop, you can, um, the one thing that is kind of weird to me is apparently I run steam out of a Arch Linux container, 
At which point I go, well, why, why not just base this on Arch? I guess if you want to like in, consume a bunch of like the Nobara stuff. Because I want it to work. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Fedora, uh, Fedora Steam seems to work fine. I don't, or Arch Steam seems to work fine. I don't know. Why, 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 why both? I, I guess they just want to inherit whatever Valve is doing on SteamOS proper. So they figured, let's just make an Arch container and then we can just import that. It'll work, right? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> the the thing that I um I was reading through the notes like okay so why are they doing this and not just helping the Chimera OS people with Chimera OS and I went to the Chimera OS website it's like ah okay you you're still not supporting Nvidia on the new build okay that was yeah <laughs> a distro like Besite was uh, rather inevitable at this point <laughs> oh yeah so like yeah, that is something it does out of the box man it's got support for the Nvidia. Uh, for mm -hmm. the NVIDIA decks we were talking about last week, Pedro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, no, if you want to install this uh, outside of the deck, you absolutely can. Uh, what's, what, what's, what's the under and over of NVIDIA releasing uh, a Steam Deck? That's called the next Nintendo console. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, see, this I, is I, NVIDIA, I, though, man. NVIDIA is like, <sighs> yeah, well, you know. See, I, I, I would love NVIDIA to, like, put out an ARM thing and then, like... This in in my fantasy dream world where like wizards and elves exist and shit mm -hmm. like they hire Markan to do the OS for it. Mm. Proper Linux with the yeah, proper pro ARM yeah. Nvidia thing. Yeah. And send them an email. I was like, can we get this to support FireWire? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, only over uh, a USB uh, FireWire <laughs> to Thunderbolt Type One to Thunderbolt Type Two, Thunderbolt Type Three mm -hmm. to ISA converter. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like five step forward, 15 steps back. I don't know. Man. So to that point, though, do you think we'll ever see now? I, I guess this all boils down to what we've brought up so many times, like is the release of, you know, what Valve said they were going to do. They're going to release SteamOS so people could actually do this. Everyone's waiting, Valve. Hmm. Everyone's waiting. We, we've already <laughs> seen what the Windows versions of Steam Deck look like, and they're not pretty. Unless you bought mm -hmm. one, then you're like, it's not that bad. Shut up. Oh, man. I, 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 uh, so, someone posted that interview with Phil Spencer where he, he talks about the Steam Deck. He's like, my Acer ROG ally is my Xbox on the go because you're contractually not allowed to use a Steam Deck. If you touch one, Statue Nadella bursts into flames and you lose your paycheck, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> At least he did pay some lip, serv uh, lip service to Linux to say that the Steam Deck actually propelled Linux to being number two on Steam. And then he brought up the Asus ROG ally. <laughs> hey, man, yeah, listen, so. this ROG ally is great. Uh, they did say that they were going to get Baldur's Gate. That was an interesting little blurb. About, so after a, a conversation, uh, da, 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 we're going to bring Baldur's Gate to some Microsoft console that it previously wasn't. And it was like vague enough. And like, you just fill it in. It's like after a discussion, I was like involving money. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm sure. Um, after Larian was cut a sizable check that says, please get your fucking split screen working on our Series S. <laughs> uh, you, yes, it has to run at 640p interval or 640i, but get it done, guys. Steam Deck News. Retro Deck. Deck. Yeah, Retro Deck. Uh, if you want to play uh, old games that are not supported via Linux, but are supported by the myriad emulators that run on Linux, you might want a solution such as Retro Deck. Uh, which has some neat enhancements for the latest version, 0.71b. Uh, right now, uh, you can uh, update the app, app directly from Discover, which is currently the only way you can update it now because they busted the in-app updater. So uh, be aware of that. Um, they also remapped a bunch of the button layout uh, based off of a bunch of user feedback to make it play a little bit more nice with like uh, the Nintendo Switch emulator and a few other things. So yeah, if you want to get emulators running on your deck via the flat packs, this is an easy way to do it because you just go into desktop mode, you go into discover, install it, and you're kind of just off for the races. I hate this name. <laughs> Here, kitty. Here, kitty. <laughs> but you, you make that noise and everybody knows exactly what emulator you're talking yeah. about, right? PP, SS, PP. Yeah. Uh, Pedro, you, you said know, PP. probably have a better idea than I do. Um, realistically, well, it's like the newest system that you can emulate on your Steam Deck that you can do 60 FPS with? Reliably, the PS2. Uh, you can get some PS3 games to work at like 30-ish, like they were made to do. Major kudos to RPCS3 for actually getting that up and running. 
but uh yeah uh reliably the the ps2 dreamcast games are as high as you can expect to go to get like 60 fps what about the uh, users I got it, it, and it really depends on the game too, right? If it, if it's the, like that's yeah, the, the, I forgot if, if it, the, if it, the the switch is technically newer despite the hardware not being as good. Yeah, but yeah, if, the, if, Yuzu. if, if it's like Cooking Mama or something, then yeah, like yeah, the uh, the, the new Zelda that it, it was working at sixty FPS on the Steam Deck on release day, so. <laughs> and, the new and this games is that why... are coming out still have to run on like eight year old uh mobile phone hardware yes <laughs> and, and this is why denuvo is coming out with emulation detection for switch oh, games man. because it's like you know why what? would you want to play your hundred dollar canadian game okay that's 720p that has nothing to do with the current switch that's nvidia not nvidia all well, in part Denuvo. nvidia and nintendo going y'all motherfuckers gonna have a time emulating switch two games mm. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, we, we got we got some new games to talk about though. Uh, these guys uh, reached out to us apparently. Uh, yeah, Zoria. do you want a copy of this game? Um, yeah, maybe I'll give it a shot after I'm know. done with BG3 in like a year and a half. Uh, Pedro doesn't have time <laughs> to play games, and I'm personally like, anyway, let's talk about it now. But yeah, uh, Zoria, yeah, Zoria, Age of uh, Shattering. It is a tactical uh, RPG with some base building el- building elements, basically fantasy XCOM. Uh, it is coming out on October 5th. They reached out to say that it is it is happening. Uh, and I'm always down to see more tactics, fantasy RPGs. I love that shit. It is my crap. Crack. Um, yeah, and like <laughs> I said, it has a base building like XCOM. This is also their second RPG. This company apparently has been putting out games for a while. Anshar Publishing. Uh, they put out a uh, roguelike deck builder called Liberté and a cyberpunk uh, isometric RPG called Game Deck. Uh, so this is their first like sort of larger story based tactical one. Uh, and it'll, honestly, it looks pretty good for uh, for an indie like about on par with Solasta, which is like the other sort of big indie RPG. Um, it's got a demo too. That's always right. nice. Na- native on uh, Steam OS. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I might definitely check this guy out. Unlocking in five weeks, and I mean, it, it looks all right. Like yeah. just looking at it. it I'm like, yeah, looking at the screenshots and the trailer. The general atmosphere that they have going on reminded me a lot of Dungeon Siege, the first one. It's just that this one's turn-based instead of uh, real-time. So, Did you see yeah. the Hoovable Dungeon Siege movie? I watched uh, it. Once. It, I, I don't remember much of it. I know that it has Jason Statham playing the farmer. J- <laughs> and Burt Reynolds as the king. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like something might be fun to watch. One thing I noticed here in the system requirements for this, SSD is strongly recommended, to which I'm going to, this is going to be the first call out to send us some hate mail or leave a comment on the YouTube video this week. Is anybody in the audience right now still gaming on a hard drive, on a spinny drive? Plat- platter drive? Yeah. yeah. Like, do, do you live that life? I think there's a lot of people that have like the SSD for the OS. And then they have all of their games installed on a two terabyte hard drive or something like Can that. Can I add yeah. a modification to that? <laughs> what I think is more common is people have all their games saved, installed, but the games that they play are installed on the SSD. Uh, Steam does let you move the games back and forth easily. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but then again, I'm, I think we're all unfamiliar. Like how bad of an experience is a modern well, especially for games like these that have like really large maps that need to like, and a lot of teeny uh, tiny little yeah. files that need to be yeah. loaded, lo- 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 not lo- necessarily lo- sequentially. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, like um, the, the, on, honestly, BG it's bringing it back to BG three because I can't shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> that has some brutal load times. That's like one one of my big complaints about the game. But it's really is, easy to quick save though, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it it is. <laughs> And then, as and long then as you don't need to quick load. <laughs> yeah. All right. Maybe we don't need to reload this because our next game comes from Arthur and one of our patrons because you can leave suggestions in our show notes. And I'm like, you know what? This one's getting a shot just because it's called Death Bulge. Yeah. <laughs> Battle <laughs> of the Bands, man. Uh, it definitely has something in its front pocket for us. Hand-drawn RPG. Like, okay. You can attack baddies with music, so I can only assume that they've somehow managed to license the soundtrack to the movie Spice World. Who knows? Combat, it's turn-based, but it looks like there's this DDR rhythm section going down with the uh, combat. Let's mm. see if we can take a look at it in the video. 
give it a second with you know this is what you would expect with an rpg right you know like back yeah, yeah. Back oh, okay so yeah you, you your, your button progression is your move and sort of like legend out. of the dragoon style yeah okay then i'm lost i'm like now what's going on that looks like an action cue yeah yeah <laughs> They have skulls, and we're fighting in a slug made entirely of arm. Yeah, there, there, there's like I don't, I don't know the the art style seems pretty. I, I like it, and it looks like it has a decent sense of humor to it. Right. So yeah, I mean it's called Death Bulge. I mean that's Death like Bulge. clue number one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah musically themed. Like the the bass player has a bass made out of fish, like out of big belly basses. Or whatever. Right. That's I that, that that got a chuckle out of me. Uh, soundtrack it's, 1999. That's a, and, that's uh, a little pricey. The reviews are uh, very positive. Like 99% of the 119 reviews are positive. So I think they're doing well. <laughs> okay, hang on. Let's see what the people who don't like death bulges in their front pockets have to say. <laughs> I thought this would be fun. It's like a way too repetitive. All right, whatever. Uh, I can't get into this. It plays like a Y2K flash game from the music to the dialogue. Another Kickstarter regret. Aww. I mean, the I mean, maybe, maybe that's like an aesthetic thing because I know there, there some people that like, grab the 2000s flash hard. They had, and there was some good shit back then, right? Like, like I mean, it was okay. Like because, yeah. like, just with like our age difference, you have a completely different lens for that because those were the games you grew up playing, man. Like, yeah. you know, you weren't of the age of like, oh, I can make these. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, I played a lot of No Time to Explain when it was still a flash game. <laughs> okay, lads. Couple of game updates, Pedro. How long will it be until we're playing this in a browser? Uh, I don't think we'll be alive to see that. At least not to any um, significant performance. But uh, you remember uh, the uh, RTX remix that Nvidia talked about like six months or so ago? Uh, they showed some uh, what was it, Morrowind at the time. Well, now there's a new project coming out of it. It's Half Life Two. Yes. I, I, I very much look forward to not being able to play Half-Life 2 in 2025, 6, whatever this comes out. Uh, I'm still okay, waiting. Hang on, we, we got to back this up because as much crap as we've all given them as through our playthroughs of like the computer room, how it didn't age very well. Mm-hmm. Like all the it, random. It, it's, it stays the same. <laughs> yeah. Check it it's out. just got better CRT. lighting and different things on screen. <laughs> yeah. It's, it stays CRT, the same maybe. except they Changed the stuff on screen. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Still four yeah, by no, threes. It, it's still four by threes, still CRTs, uh-huh. but the stuff that's actually being displayed on the screen is different. Look at the, that. Yeah. Look no, at it's that. um it, like the uh, NVIDIA remix, uh, the RTX remix, is that um, it takes a rendered scene from the engine and then in real time replaces it with higher resolution models and introduces the necessary bits to get ray tracing up and running with, 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 the, with the trackball yeah. integrated trackball <laughs> but we're here for yeah, the grabs. Uh, I, I i very much uh you posted that they uh made it open source a uh a couple months back i i must have missed that <laughs> I'm still waiting yeah. for uh, the people uh, working on OpenMW to get that up and running so we could get the actual Morrowind uh, uplift that they sh- uh, that they did on the uh, the presentation. That Where would are be we nice. at with the uh, Lombada on the suit? Did we, just, did we like it printed or did we like this new boss look? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. It, it depends on how, what, 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 what vibe we want to black, represent Black Mesa with. Because like, the embossed one is if they spent the money on the HEV suit. The, the, the screen printed on is like, this was the cheapest thing that we could put on Gordon to make sure he doesn't get irradiated. Which I, I feel is more akin to the Black Mesa philosophy of cutting all the corners. I can't wait. Um, you know, as far as a fan mate, I can't wait to like stutter around in this game at seven twenty p on my thirty sixty and try to. <laughs> well, will it work with synergy? That's my question. <laughs> oh man, uh, this genuinely does look good enough to where um, if there's even the slightest, because the one thing I'm like worried about is, am I going to be able to play this with a thirty sixty without DLSS eleven D? Dash whatever plus frame gen plus whatever the hell the new ray tracing frame gen DLSS thing is in order to have an acceptable like frame rate at like 
1080p medium. Which is probably going to be the case. Like our RTX portal was like, yeah, let's let's increase the system requirements on portal substantially. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and one of those things like down the road, because like this is enough of a graphical upgrade to where I would justify another playthrough of Half-Life 2. Yeah. Just to go sightseeing, if nothing else. Yeah, just just and see what's different. Off at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want I want like the the ray traced Half Life One, but like with with the original polygons, I just want mm. like G Man's face to just be like a perfect triangle, just like. Okay, we can make that happen. Uh, okay, now I see they uh, the bits that they open sourced were the client tools for the XVK, and um, not the XVK, just have the bridge, the actual um, modding bits. They still haven't released them. They're still a notify me on the uh, RTX Remix page. So, so we're, we're still the, waiting on them. <laughs> are those modding tools just for Morrowind? Uh, for everyone to be able to create the, new the, RTX yeah, the, mods. The, the, the RTX Remix thing. Yeah. So you yeah. hear that? You hear that, NVIDIA? Not good enough. <laughs> That's the thing. I really want that. what they showed with Morrowind. I really want that. I want that to be playable with OpenMW. I... I want to live that. <laughs> I mean, you want to live that up to a point. Let's be honest. Yes. <laughs> up to a point, but still enough that when that presentation was going and I was like, wait a second, that's Morrowind. Why are they? Oh, okay. That looks very good. <laughs> I, I, I want to see that. I, I want to play with that. I want to play Morrowind like that. that, that yes, I would. <laughs> All right. Well, you also want to play running with the rifles. I you've got you got a lot more traction out of this game than <laughs> either of us. I've played yeah quite a bit of uh, running with the rifles since they uh, sent his keys back a long time ago. Uh, but yeah, update one ninety seven. They're almost at two point oh. <laughs> got to release that sometime. Uh, it's uh, it's out. There's a new map, Route 666, and a uh, camera mod. Route 666 is not an entirely new map. It's like a variation of the existing World War II map. Oh, is it called Hell's Highway? So they basically just did a remix and called it Route 666. And there's a couple of specific events which trigger in that map, and they also added it to the rotation. If you're playing the campaign, either single player on on one of the official servers, you can just, as you go through the maps, this will show up. The camera mod is interesting. Uh, they created a little uh, showcase that just has the camera going at different angles and zooming in and out and panning and doing things, which is great because this is one of those games that has the top-down view camera, which has been, you know, at the time, I'm sure it was uh, a necessity, but nowadays you can totally just let us have, like, some... So this game has online multiplayer, right? Yes. Is there a mode where I can log in and place the camera? Uh, no. Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Adversarial camera, like intentionally. <laughs> oh, 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 see, that, that, would, that would be a fun one, is multiplayer Dark Souls, except one player is the camera and the other person is the, <laughs> is the actual player. Right, and it's co-op, so you got to work together yeah. or not. I mean, well, no, 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 no. They, they so have you, exposed the, the, the camera mod tools now, so go based on how many kills. <laughs> the cameraman gets scored based on how many kills they can engineer of the other player. <laughs> but you only get scores when you hit other checkpoints. So at a certain point, you have to let them progress. Oh man! <laughs> what I do uh, want, uh, I I want someone to take the uh, the new modding tools and create a proper over the shoulder third person view, so we can play the game like that instead of the top down one. That'd be nice. Every, every For, yeah, but then you're gonna like have to bear witness like every time you see a mod like that you see how like how bad the animation rigging is they're like dur, 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 dur. oh yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> ser serious why. sam third person had, had, had that real bad it's like yes you can go in third person mode mm -hmm. sam pulls all his guns out of his ass right because hey yeah. we didn't plan on having to render that yeah <laughs> that's gonna wrap us up for all of our steamy news this week so let's jump right into the uh kind of the big announcement uh we all were waiting for did anybody watch anything from gamescom i watched like the like maybe 10 minutes the opening i'm like ah, whatever i'll catch it later. i started watching the starfield one this like now now todd howard's just lying now so we're gonna go away now <laughs> when does kramer show up in starfield 
I don't care about Starfield, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, AMD announcement. That's really the only thing that that's what brought Gamescom to my attention to the point of like, oh yeah, that's this week. Announcement of not one, but two new cards, 7800 XT at 499 and the 7700 XT at 499. Mmm, Navi mm. 32, baby, and they're super not hyper expensive. The one thing from this, uh, was, it, was, it, was there a little quote in here, or did, was this from the article itself? Yeah, I think this was in the article itself. It says, uh, Oh, you know, yeah, it's, it's not just about performance. Yeah. It's not just about performance, to which I'm, I'm just going to say bullshit. Uh, <laughs> it, it's always all about performance, and that's not true. It's about price and performance and finding that ratio. And, you know, looking at the price performance and like going through these slides, uh, comparing it with the competitors, or do you know what we're talking about there? Uh, it it looks, yeah, they didn't exactly rock any pricing boats here. They, they, they were like, you know what? Let's compete against our previous gen products. Effectively, yeah, this mm-hmm. is uh, very much in between, falling in between the um, sixty-eight hundred XT and the sixty-nine fifty. So eh, it's it's not the worst because they want to compare the four hundred and fifty dollars seven uh, seven uh, I seventy-seven hundred. There's a word in there somewhere. Yes. <laughs> I can say 7700 uh to be compared with the uh $500 4060 Ti 16 gig and if that graph that they have showing it's a first party graph so you know grain of salt um if that stands up to independent testing that's pretty good you could have um even in a bunch of ray traced games AMD is handily beating so they claim the um the 4060 ti with the 7700 so it, it's still pricey 450 is a little bit much it should be like the 7700 should be 399 Would you wear sunglasses like that even on a dare are those the, the 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 misshapen ones yeah yeah, yeah. The, no. i mean if you're going for like the spider <laughs> jerusalem look maybe i don't know uh, like that, okay, yeah, dear AI, make me some shades. I'm like, here you go. <laughs> oh, man. Meow, 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 meow. Yeah, like, uh, I, I, and I'm looking at these numbers like, okay, well, I, I got to add the fucking Canada multiplier to all this stuff because it's it's getting even more expensive over here. So if my napkin math is right, the 7700 is going to come in just in the middle of the 8 gig 4060 Ti and the 16 gig 4060 Ti. So if it can compete in, if it can, if it can beat the 8 gig, then I think, you know, there's there, there's there's an argument to be made for it. But again, we're seeing this whole like AMD's putting a lot of faith in their new architecture. And we saw with the 7900 and the 7800 GRE or the, yeah, the 7900 GRE um, dropping the core counts um, is not going to like your improved architecture and combined with dropping the core counts is really only going to get you like a 10 to 15 percent like increase over the previous generation which is not that compelling and when you start looking at like there are reasonably now like the 6800 xts the 3070s like they're all reasonably priced now you can you can get them and they are of like you know you know minus 10 to 15 percent performance but again you're getting that for two to three hundred dollars less like, yeah, like, like we were talking about, like the uh, best NVIDIA card that it, it remains true all these months later, and it's not going to change anytime soon. That you you can buy right now, and like price performance is the thirty sixty Ti. That's that you have the a second one. Yeah. Was, <laughs> now and like the your best option between the seventy eight uh, these two cards is the used sixty seven hundred XT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I can get <laughs> those for like two sixty, two forty. Yeah, done all day because. Like, what is there really to sell you on? The, what do they have? AV1 encoding. You know what? YouTube that, only. Yep. YouTube beta. If, if Twitch had they gotten around to uh, rolling that out, I'm like, okay, you have a point. No point yet. So, uh, but future proof. You know what? Wait. Yeah, you, you, you can wait until, like, hopefully, hopefully NVIDIA and, well, ho- hopefully Battle Mage comes out and mm-hmm. comes out at a reasonable price point that, like causes these guys to drop some prices and, and, and the, yeah these are go, amd go. cards uh the the price is not going to stay at msrp it's mm-hmm. either there someone's going to find something that they're really good at and the price is just gonna rock it like it has done historically 
or uh, they're going to go, yeah, no, these are not, you know, anything spectacular. So the price is going to drop. Just wait. Don't buy things on release. Well, just I mean, wait. let's just go back to like, it's not just about performance. Tom's hardware. Again, bullshit. Uh, we're, we're seeing both AMD and NVIDIA trying to sell their cards, not on rasterization performance, but on their gimmicky bullshit. Mm. Like who's got the better gimmicky bullshit? Frame gen, yeah. dynamic, super RTX, whatever, all, right? all, all, all this all smoke and mirror shit so you can play your Smirovision shit that, you know, fucking... <laughs> Ours is more smeary. <laughs> Less smeary. FSR3, baby. <laughs> Extra smeary. We can generate frames of smear, though, Pedro. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we can interplay frames. That's, yeah. We'll call it frame generation. Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll, we'll just make up a frame that's supposed to be in there. That looks about right. Well, as we were talking about in the pre pre super chosen, um, damn it, Intel. Release Battle Mage. You like, give us something to like, just that, that little, little photon of hope coming through the clouds. And be like, maybe, maybe, because AMD is not doing us any favor. A AMD has, uh, you know, the next, uh, the upcoming generation of Navi. AMD has already been rumored that they're not going to compete on the high end. They're like, no, we're just going to be doing low and mid range stuff. This is the mid range stuff. So, oh. That, mm. That's it. That's what we're looking at. The It's not going to even reach 7900 XT level mm -hmm. of attempting to compete yep. with the 4080. No, it's just going to be... AV1, Pedro, AV1. 800-ish. Bro, bro, AV1. Yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> AV1, yeah, AV1 would be great, uh, Twitch. Yeah, we, we, we were all very excited for that when we were assuming that it was coming like within a reasonable time frame. Four years ain't. ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Um, but... Maybe, maybe you've chosen good. You've chosen well. Isn't that right, Linus? That's right. And you bought an <laughs> NVIDIA card. So you need to download this big, bad, naughty binary maybe, NVIDIA drivers. Maybe you bought two because you're, 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 a, you're a nasty, nasty motherfucker. And uh, we don't know anybody that rich. I mean, come on. No. Imagine having two GPUs these days. Yeah, You'd be like, no, oh, man, let's go ride in your like, Ferrari, homie. No. Yeah, gold-plated gold <laughs> Ferrari collection, man, right here. Yeah, we got... Uh, it's not at the beginning of the news segment because we had to talk about new video cards, but we got NVIDIA drivers to talk about. Very, very, very short release notes. Uh, they There's fixed that DKMS fucking bug. Time, right? <laughs> Though, man. Yeah, so... Um, SLA fixes in 2023. <laughs> and this, this is for the open GPU kernel modules. So someone who's fucking around with the open source stack is like... Like, hey, I found a bug and I might have fixed it. And so, you know, that's the nice thing about open sourcing your drivers is you can source fixes from the community. And, you know, now your SLI will work in 2023. Um, the, the big one for me is they is they fixed that stupid fucking DKMS bug. So now it will like properly regenerate your init RAM disk. So you don't have to do that manually all the time. Well, yeah, you like it manually in the one, future one all more of a sudden, time. Right. You're like, oh, yeah. look, wow, it just automatically did the thing like it was supposed to do. Yeah, like it did for years on yeah. end. Yeah, while it, was, I was it was still working using fine. Nvidia cards, yeah. and and then it broke, and they're like, <laughs> "Oopsie!" And like real realistically, it's running a com one single command before you reboot your machine. But still, right, this, the installer it's, script should fucking do that for me. I'm running it as root anyways. It doesn't me up the damn wall when I'm as much as I play around with the kernels, dude. Yeah. Yeah, like, you're going to have to uh, regenerate the unit RAMFS after yeah. running the DKMS install and, 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 every time. Yeah, and, like, and you forget, <laughs> and you reboot the computer, and it's like... Oh. It reminds you, it reminds you when it just sits there on TTY with that one line, you're like, well, mm -hmm. time to alt F1 this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so hopefully that shit is squashed for good. Hooray. Well, maybe we just give up this whole PC gaming thing, and we'll go, we, 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 we return to console. From whence we came. Yeah, I'll get out my old Game Boy. I'll just play Tetris. You know what? There's nothing There's nothing wrong with Tetris. Tetris is like a perfect fucking game. You know what? I think we can do even better than Tetris because Tetris was like one of the original like high, high five, what I would call mobile games. Sony wants us to get some mobile games with our Sony oh, consoles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you already have to have a console going because this, That's this cool. is just NES a head. <laughs> this... Uh, what they uh, claim to be releasing for two hundred dollars is, um, well, it's a handheld dumb terminal. <laughs> it's uh, the yeah. first remote play dedicated device, except for you know that little dongle that you could buy to uh, play with your DualShock Four on whatever Windows oh, and Linux PC. Is that like tangentially related to the Wii U controller? Or or or, uh, just, or, yes. or better yet, run Shiaki <laughs> on your Steam Deck. <laughs> 
because this is effectively a Sony Wii U controller. It is, you need a PlayStation 5 in order to stream the game to this thing. So, uh, yeah, it, the battery life will probably be better than the original Wii U controller. So, you know, <laughs> there'll like be that the, uh, going like, for it. <laughs> you know, they, they cut a PS5 controller in half, and I like how the handles are angled on both sides. No fox came mm-hmm. on the tablet, because you can get some distance launching that thing at somebody, because it's got like that handy, <laughs> like boomerang. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, got, it's got a moment arm. Yeah. it a little bit, probably. But yeah, no, maybe the devs of uh, Sony exclusives can make games to specifically take advantage of the dual screen configuration yes, that I'm you're sure going the, to have. I'm sure all the devs are like, <laughs> I can do that for money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, I genuinely don't get oh, it. Oh. I, I didn't get Is- the Logitech one that was already a streaming thing and i genuinely don't get this one sony what the fuck you know what i don't what, what, what if what if this is just telling us that we're getting bayonetta 2 on ps5 finally <laughs> i'd buy a fucking ps5 uh what do, this this is like fancy look they get earbuds they get like just accessories you know you expect to see like playstation earbuds you get playstation headphones playstation blender playstation uh, dildo yeah yeah uh, th- those headphones look silly. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they look a little orby. Yeah, but I, I'm with you, Ben. Like, $200 is way lower than I thought this thing was mm, going to be. Yeah, from Sony, right? They're, they're like, hey, we're going to release a VR. How, how much is it? More than the PlayStation, fuckos. Uh, yeah, they, they have a fucking controller that's $180. So, like, this right. is... Yeah, I mean, Microsoft's got one that's 200 <laughs> Yeah, so, like, this is, like, not the worst <laughs> in terms it, of... It, it's, it's not... It's, but they do say that you know, this requires broadband, which apparently for Sony is a Wi-Fi with at least five megabits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, broadband in the American sense. Gotcha. Broadband. Yes. <laughs> broadband. Um, I, Still, I, I, $200 for a dumb handheld that doesn't do anything by itself. True, but you always have your PlayStation 5 on anyway. Like you, you would have with your to. Xbox. You don't have a choice in the matter. Well, well yeah, you can't, you can't save your game in Returnal, so you got to leave that thing mm-hmm. running all the time. And this is something I learned about with a, uh, talking to uh, Filthy Console players. Uh, if you want to come join us, Filthy Casuals on Tuesdays and Fridays, we got some console players in the town. And uh, they're like, yeah, they just go into sleep mode. You never cut them off because it takes billions of years for them to boot back up. So they I'm have thinking, an SSD, too, which is crazy. Well, I mean, their consoles are built. They're, they're not computers, man. No, no, no the, the, it's not like they run on x80. Wait, I'm waiting, Pedro. Go ahead. <laughs> that was the he, joke. He, yes, he's, he's just waiting to get his correspondence back from Tim Sweeney any day now. Any day, <laughs> uh, but here's what I'm thinking you got that even at 199. Uh, this only makes sense of like what's the battery life, and they're able to say a week <laughs> because then you just got something like, Yeah, reach over and play this real quick. All right. All right, put it back down. I don't have to worry about it. It's, it can't be something that you have to nurse, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, I, honestly, if it could get, like, seven or eight hours, I'd say that's, like, a decent... It, it'll be decent, right? Like, you could play a little bit before going to sleep, mm-hmm. when you wake up a bit, take it to the toilet. But and, like, like, the first thing I want to do with it is, like, how much Nintendium does it have it? And, like, launch this thing into some drywall and pull it out yeah. and see if it still works, right? How, how urine-resistant is it? That's looks what I want to <laughs> See the the um, the Dual Sense is a sturdy controller is significantly heavier than the um Dual Shock 4. So there's at least some girth here. What about oh, That's what I look for. What, what, what about major. speaking of girth. What about the joystick drift? Replacing a joystick on this fucker is going to be fun. right off. Look, I mean if you- yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could just <laughs> snap it off. I look time. forward to the iFix and repairability on this one. Yeah, um, it's just like the Nintendo Switch, right? Just like the Lenovo handheld snap. Man, that sounds like a great deal, but not as good as what Epic is going to be offering people. If you're a game developer or studio and you're looking to make all the money, Epic is going to be offering you 100% of revenue for not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. Brace yourselves. Six months of exclusivity. That's all you got to give them. They'll give you all the cheddar. However, the difficulty multiplier for this, kids, is you got to make the money on the Epic Store, which I know a lot of people are like, wait a minute, that, that's actually a real thing. I thought it was just a thing I showed up to to get my free games. 
No, no, no. <laughs> That's just a myth you tell children to scare them at night. If, if you if you look closely, you'll find out that you can purchase things through the uh, free game interface. And <laughs> my first thought about this is like previously, the only way you were able to get X, Epic to get in like an exclusive, which is just it pissed everybody off at some point in the audience. You're like, really? We got to wait on this? Was to give money to the developers. Now, you know, nobody was chomping at the bit. They're like, yeah, if you write, write me a check, sweetie, we'll, be, we'll happily be on the um, Steam store, not Steam store, the Epic store. We'll, we'll, for we'll, we'll live out our early access. Yeah. Yeah. Squash all the bugs. And- so, uh, and then I'm thinking like during all this time that we've had multiple exclusives, uh, which have affected all of us in different ways. I'm like, man, you know, it's just waiting. It's not affected, you know, real big deal. If Epic had spent some of the time, like improving their storefront, adding some basic features, getting more than just one operating system on their storefront in a post Steam Deck world where you really have to be like, I'm oblivious to the reality at this point. Um, you know, in some creature conference that you found in, uh, on Steam, then Turning it into something more than, more than just an outlet for Fortnite DLC and add-ons is what I'm saying. Maybe put the work yeah, there, you wouldn't have but to. But that's the cash cow. <laughs> I know, but then you do things like this and say, well, Epic, have you done any of that work? And they go, no, but 100% revenue. Huh? Right, uh, which no no one is going to buy. And like this this is the business equivalent of you know, learning that one cheap-ass move in a fighting game and just spamming that over and over and over again because it's the one thing you can do. Uh, and the, the goal here, according to their press spin, is they want to appeal to more indies. They found that while larger companies are more amenable to the uh, to the exclusivity, a lot of people aren't a lot of the indie folks aren't really willing to leave Steam because, you know, Steam, despite taking a much larger cut, actually does provide them with support and tooling and all of these other things. As and a mentioned. much wider audience. <laughs> yeah, a, a much wider audience and discoverability beyond, hey, this game is free for a week. Go download mm-hmm. it. Um, and like, yeah, I'm all I listen. I'm all for giving the developers a larger cut. I think the people who are actually doing the work to make the product should reap the highest benefit. But if you want this to actually work, as Ven said, you have to make the Epic Game Store a place where people actually want to buy fucking games. They've spent the whole time appealing to the devs that they seem to have forgotten that it's the people who buy the games that that that's where the money is. So literally everyone I know that does computer video gamey things seems to only have the Epic Store for the free games. They they've never yeah. bought anything on it. Well, when it was new, when it was novel, like I like yeah, okay, I, I had an Epic account for some game that we had a login for. And that I was would, uh, uh, Unreal Four. Yeah, and that lasted for me like maybe two months and that novelty wore off. I'm like, I don't care, whatever. It's it's not even worth my time to go to the Epic Store to redeem a free game yeah, at this point. And while, you know, free games are great, everyone appreciates that. Mm-hmm. It's not a business model. It, 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 it's not no. the kind of thing that you can build a an entire Steam well, competitor. It's really on. good to get people to show up. But again, <laughs> yeah. it goes back to t- while you're doing that, improve the product so yeah. people stay. Yeah, the, the, if, the whole, if the whole point is to get people in the funnel, the funnel can't just be like two inches, right? Like there needs to be more of it so that people can go through it and actually purchase or, the or game. Put, put, a, put a couch in the funnel, like yeah. in, maybe a little end table. A little, little soda bar? How long did it take yeah. him to add a fucking shopping cart? <laughs> two years? <laughs> 37 was, months, Pedro. Never gonna it, let it, go. it, it was long enough that people were getting their accounts locked from buying more than two games at once. <laughs> And another way to look at this as an indie developer is like, oh, Epic, you're telling me I'm not good enough to get a check from you. Got it. Got Mm -hmm. it. Understood. (laughs) Crystal clear. Timmy loves the game devs, though. He loves them so much. He does, man. He's doing it for for us. We're we're just too dumb to realize it. I understand. I understand. So uh, who here has a GPU? Anybody? Never heard of it. What's a GPU? Uh, imagine you had a computer inside your computer and all these motherfuckers bought them off because of AI and drove the price. Oh, uh, one of those. Yeah, yeah. I think I have one of what those. Is, in I, I should have said somewhere. an AI accelerator. LLM. <laughs> um, yes, th- those LLL, LLM expansion cards. Wait, you can use those for playing games? I know, right? I know it's kind of strange. Um, you might not have heard of this application. GPU Viz. It's been around for a minute. It has. And it does Go like is. well i'm trying to find i have went tab blind everyone this is interesting 
Where are we at? There we go. <laughs> hey, there it is. And boop. Boop. Give me that. Look at that. How handy is that? That's really cool. What am I showing you, man? So it, it's a way to just visualize anything that gets hung up on the GPU and where it's at. You know, it, it's it, what it says. It's going to show you what's stalling out, what's causing it. There's your blue V blank events. Can I get over here? Yep. Uh, state tracker, uh, F trace, everything that you would expect. Why are we talking about this? Because it has been added to Mesa officially. The commit's yes. done. Nothing to be done about it. It's in there now. And I think this is a good thing, right? And see, GPU Viz, this was created by Michael uh, Sarton, and he is one of the OG people responsible for getting Valve on Linux. One of the developers behind that. So having, you know, Trace Visualizer in Mesa, I think is nothing but a good thing. This is going to help people, especially when you're dealing with Proton and things like that, right? Well, yeah, the 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 big uh, the big desire here is uh, they don't want to have to rebase uh, rebase their Mesa to and to export all of this uh, GPU Gapuvis uh, information Gapuvis. Um, every time they want to test something. So having this just in Mesa, being able to turn on export that information and with within like the running system that you're testing is like invaluable, right? Because now now you actually see. W where you don't have to like reproduce the issue you don't have to be like oh was i standing here was i clicking on this thing what weapon do i have equipped equipped it's all just being dumped to your your visualizer which is which is very nice it's gotta go with pedro weren't you like looking for something like this earlier in the week uh not like this exactly it was you weren't uh, looking for a cuda profiler either no <laughs> like, here here's nvidia's tool that does the thing that you're talking about no, that that was dude, that was actually two weeks ago. But uh, yeah, no, the one that you posted that was just uh, Nvidia only, which is mm -hmm. unfortunate. I have an Nvidia but yeah, card. it was uh, something like Intel's um, new GPU Busy solution that they developed for uh, Presentmon. Yes, which still doesn't have a Linux version. This could very well be an alternative, uh, but uh, they want to have it enabled by default on the deck it's like what what kind of performance impact is that gonna have and can we minimal. have a toggle please no <laughs> i mean if yeah if you're, if you're if you're just dumping information that's like minimal performance impact. you know what yeah I mean, if, if it's just the Konami code dump, and we're good <laughs> if it's just a dump okay sure uh, and it's only going to be uploaded whenever the error uh blobs and everything else gets uploaded to steam anyway so fair enough but how about you give people an option and at the same time also give them the option to upload it, those logs, whenever, say, they have a crash and just do it right then and there. Just pop a little thing, say, would you like to send this right now? Like, but then you yes. got, but then you, but then you got to <laughs> enable it. Then yeah, then like right opt-in data is useless. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> As we've established yes. Fedora. <laughs> I don't see that. You got to get me away from like a well laid out, well designed uh, graphic uh data visualization I, I i am moth to flames to those things man like I, I will just sit and watch you know watching the matrix code effectively yeah right? it's, it, it, it's like a digital fishbowl yeah like like oh what's that doing oh, 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 oh. But or, I or, or, or or those or those old dvd screensavers you know where it's like the logo bouncing around yes. and into like the little <laughs> everyone corner. waiting for it to touch the corner <laughs> And things like this is going to be extremely helpful and handy to have on the deck because you, then you don't have to have all your umbilical cords hooked up to your deck. You're like, all right, what's stalling out here, man? Let's take a look real quick. Like, mm -hmm. Aha. Got it. Indeed. That's, yeah, for the Steam Deck especially because everything considered is still a very limited GPU scenario. So that having that tool be available just everywhere is very, very useful. Yes. <laughs> Pretty dope. Last story Dendi. tonight. Yes. Uh, you might remember this name if you were living in the Soviet Union back in the uh, late 80s and you got access to a Famiclone because uh, Dendi was the big one that got produced uh, in the Soviet Union and imported, or at least one of them. Uh, but this is not that. This is a online multiplayer capable NES clone or emulator built in Go. Uh, the network multiplayer is such that you can start up the game, you can have another friend join and then join that server, and then the game proper starts. Uh, right now, there is only keyboard-based controls and mouse-based light gun controls. Would like to, I guess there's no like SDL2 bindings for Go, but Go can use C stuff. So I, I would like to see some SDL2 stuff in for like controller support, but it's still early days.
guys. Um, a bunch of a bunch of the games are playable. Ooh, All of the TMNTs yeah. and Double Dragons are playable, which is the shit that I care about. Yeah, like Contra. The- I'll play some fucking Contra. <laughs> no. Like, Contra is not against, a really yeah. a game you try to beat. That, that Contra was like an OG. Let's kill some fucking afternoon yeah. and just go through it and beat it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, the big thing here is that both peeps need to have the exact same ROM. You need to have... It, it has to be the same. And uh, considering how big SNES ROMs are, wouldn't it be better if you could just serve up the ROM to player two when they connect so they just download I, it and then remove it once it's done? I, I can <laughs> see some, like, DMCA type. Let's Let's not... It'll further distribute software with our with our emulator. No, thing. we need to set up a ROM server. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, that's it, the it thing. Need, as it needs far to happen as over piracy is concerned, you guys you already about have. That's why I cut my camera back. Yeah, you already have tons of other websites serving up the ROMs. It's the, just the, the, yeah, just just be, just because they are doing it doesn't mean <laughs> that this project needs to. Um, and and again, like it's it's still pretty early days. The guy's like saying it's not even that accurate in NES emulator. So maybe this is a thing that it can do later on. Right now, not the most accurate nor the fastest. Yes. But again, <laughs> if you if you want to play some Double Dragon with some folks, this is a very easy way of uh, getting to it. I don't know. I was uh, always always a Sega kid. I I never played um, the Nintendos that much. My cousin had a um, a NES. <laughs> just called the Nintendo in Portugal. It was just the Nintendo. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like yeah, it was the Nintendo Entertainment System back when you know that that was like the one product they sold other than like mm-hmm. Hanafuda cards and Game and Watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's yeah, that's we 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 agreed that we should put a lot of mayonnaise in our soup. Oh, dude, uh, and ketchup. Online emulation. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm like super happy to see this because uh, I have a list of games that I'd like to go. But I want to see how bad it is. Mm. If it's going to be playable, because I tried. Uh, the, you know, we, uh, we talked about the Amiga thing a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month hmm. ago, right? And I know you mentioned like, hey, maybe we could try in the after show. I I went to launch that the other day, and it locked up my system. Oof! So I was like, no, we're not going to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and like it, like th- that that is the thing right like that stuff like remote play is trying to fix is there are a lot of old games that have couch co-op that like i would love to play with you fuckers but mm-hmm. like just no real way to do it because like they're from an era when the internet wasn't really a thing I so know. it's unfortunate so if you and, would like uh, to... how gracefully is it going to handle say me playing with Vendor so, Jordan. It's good uh, so, to have the Atlantic Pedro, I, you didn't read this. It has a rollback NES code. Yep. <laughs> Fuck you all. That was a good one. Yeah, <laughs> Banks are just that for a show title, you guys. That, 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 that's, that's the title of the show. Rollback, rollback NES, NES code. Yeah. <laughs> good, good job. Uh, I think that I think that about does it for our news segment. Do we gotta do we gotta shill ourselves now? Take off our clothes, oil ourselves up, and prostrate ourselves to the lovely people. You're determined to do this before that part, so go for it. I mean, sure. Yeah, head on over. Right, whatever. Head on over to <laughs> thexgamecast.com. Click the support button. We have all, all the links to our Patreon, to our Libre Pay, PayPal, Humble Affiliate Links, Amazon Wish Zones. Number of ways you can support us. If you buy some stuff off of our wish list, you can send us some notes. Oh, shit. I really need you. a what, PCM. What, what, what the fuck are you getting up to, homie? It's for a SATA card. It's for a SATA card because I have a short motherboard Uh with a GPU in that slot and it's hanging over the other PCI (laughs) slot. So I need to lower, lower, lower that, lower that card. That, that is, that is, that is literally the only reason why Pedro has some lock picks. Ven has all sorts of green computer components. Uh, we got a store as well. You can buy yourself some merch. If you are just dying for Frank shirt, my God, you can get yourself. Pedro needs the fan. That, yeah. that, you, yeah. know, that, you guys that were, fan, you guys were talking up the Honeywell fan, so all right, all right I'll one. put the Honeywell fan this, on this the is thing. The fan. This, is, this is like as soon as you're at like university and you get like an eight paycheck and you're like, okay, I won't get the fancy fan now. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I had this one and then I got like the big boy one. That mm-hmm. one was great. There's there's like there's like the it's, it's like like a foot foot long box fan or something is, or like two, three foot long. I don't, I don't know. If you're uh, units. Jill's got one. Jill wants penguin stuff. You know how that rolls. Yes. Oh man. So, penguin so plushies, many penguin cups. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, so send us some stuff off that and you can send us a note that we can read. If you send Ben some stuff, you can get your name in lights. There's still some room on the fuck wall. 
That's gonna what, cost what, you what is what is fuckwall four gonna be? Is that gonna be like a full digital billboard? Or no, is fuckwall that... four is. Uh, I think all the people. This everybody's picked up something in the studio. Um, this is chalk, but I don't want to like lose it, so I'm just gonna get another one of these. And so, oh, and just kind of like and just aside. move it. Yeah, kind of um, kind of uh, nuke Frank and Nick over. Uh, I gotta find something to like spray on it to like put some clear coat over it so it doesn't ever get smudged out. Mm, like, yeah, like a, like a plasticizer or something. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah, we got. Uh, you end up back there if you get anything from our studio wish list, but it's a bunch of expensive stuff because I'm still waiting. I got my fingers crossed. I got my eyes talking to Arthur about that uh, a couple of weeks ago on that goddamn epic motherboard because it's still 500 bucks. I'm waiting for a used one to show up, baby. I got my patience. That's my superpower. We're going to wait for it. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. What do you All think right. of Corsair case? Did you ever look at like the 7000D? Does anybody have a 7000D? I got questions. I got the, the 750D. Yeah, we got that's... the same fucking case. Yeah, this is the yeah, I, one. Yeah, I, I, I like. Honestly, Cor- Corsair cases, I don't, I don't put too much thought in them. I'll just like, yeah, I'm gonna get the big black one. Yeah, this is like the the biggest of the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yes, I, you I, can I, say I, I what you want to say. say. Yes. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I mean, maybe like the 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 one thing for me is always like if I'm getting a big case, a it's gotta it's gotta be able to fit the GPU. B, it's got to have a lot of hard drive cages. This must like, have vertical gonna... GPU holes. Mm. Which, the, the only reason I even bring this up because you had that uh, extension. And I was looking at that and I was like, oh shit, that'd be good to put, like, I have a bunch of capture cards that eat up all the extra PCI express holes that I have. I'm like, that would be kind of dope to have them, like, over there. I don't know. Anyway, moral of the story, head over to Linux Teamcast. Hit the contact button. Send us some hate mail. We've already had some questions this week. Especially, I want to know, what is it like if you are that lone rebel out there still gaming on a hard disk drive? Spinning disk. That's how you roll. You're not going to change your straps for nobody, and it's good. Tell us why it's good and why you're doing it. And are you just ha- do you just have your games on the hard drive, or are you just refusing to uh, use the SSD altogether? And run everything off the hard drive. And I know one of you serial killers is out there with your games on a thumb drive. I want to hear from you too. Oh yeah, the external yeah. hard drive. Yeah, no, just a thumb drive, homie. Just... <laughs> Five hundred twelve gigs. They're like, yeah, that's my drive. That's my game drive. <laughs> and it's not even a thumb drive. It's like a micro SD card <laughs> and an adapter. Yeah. Did Jordan go quiet? Yes, very yeah. quiet from the look of things. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's not on this one, homie. <laughs> uh, nope. Yeah, no, we have uh, people in chat now. Yeah, I, I too have the, the one SSD mounted for the, um, the Steam drive that just called the uh, one terabyte SSD. <laughs> Oh, Jordan, cl- click on like one of the uh, action things to make sure I still have audio from you. Raise your hand. Ah, that. Uh, uh, oh, you did it. Whatever you just did. Now, now it sounds. <laughs> now I sound? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You accidentally okay, hit a no. keyboard button. You were here fussing around. You muted yourself with a uh, three jits, right? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Uh, yeah. I've done that. That's why I bring it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, I've, I've been doing that to blow my nose, and I must have forgot to unmute myself. Ah, uh, then you're like, I don't normally mute myself, so why would I even look at that as a. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, I, 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 don't, I don't even know, man. Yeah, what Western Western Digital ra- Raptor Drive raids? I have no idea. Bring them. Uh, give yeah. us all. Give them all to us now. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we had a little bit of a celebration because for the first time, Linux had a bigger number on the Steam survey than by a Mac, and it was by. Not that much, but it's still, it's, it's 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 a it's a point of a percent, right? I mean, because what was the argument for arguments for so many years? And it was like, well, you know, what, you're making a Mac port, why aren't you making a Linux port? And you're like, well, you know, Mac's got two percent, you know, Linux is like whatever. Now that we've overtaken that, we gotta 2%. wait for the uh, the mental gymnastics of like. Get the fuck out of here! You knew we weren't going to make you a Linux port. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, you don't even need a fucking that would Linux require port now. honesty, which no. <laughs> well, Middleware. That, that's, that's the thing. You don't even need a Linux port now. You just got to make sure it boots up in Proton these days. <laughs> that's asking too much from some devs. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, mm-hmm. that thirty percent gets you a free 
what export <laughs> that that can sometimes run better than your native windows version because especially on windows kind of sucks yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh me rodin uh talk, that, 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 was, that was the name they put on me. the email it was me because yeah. I, I was highly confused when it showed up in the inbox because it said from yeah. me and i'm like wait a minute what from, from, <laughs> from you <laughs> from, right. from lord you from from the system lords <laughs> anyways me says me say, me say, <laughs> Steam survey might be a little lopsided and biased, but while it's not absolute or relative numbers, it does give you a rough bearing. Have you heard of the Chinese Linux, Kylin or Opinion Quilin? Uh, wait until all of China needs to abandon the use of Microsoft and use its own, use its own government approved OS. That'll do a dent. Also, I finally ordered the parts for my new PC that I've been eager to build for years now. Jordan will be very happy, apparently, uh, to hear that with construction completed, the last bastion of my private Microsoft use will be gone from my personal life. Bye bye, Windows 7. The fingers to Windows 10, 11 on my old gaming rig. On the laptop, I've been using Linux for some time now, and I've been gaming on it even in the past 1.5 years. I'll be MS free and all Linux soon. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. You, you. you put on you put on your big boy pants. You, you threw out your you put you put away your childish operating systems. And you became a grown up. Um, thank you. Go Apple, and thank you very much for buying a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is, is that a MacBook? Is is that laptop mentioned a MacBook that's been running Linux for a while now? I mean, good on you if it has. Listen, that's, uh, if you need to, <laughs> if you have a problem with gaming, get, get an M series Mac. Like, yeah. Well, Linux yeah, has got it, to make games yeah, on these days. So you're not safe anymore. Yeah. If, if you have like a, like a, like a drinking problem, gaming problem, not like, yeah, buy Mac. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you won't have money to drink and yeah, you won't be able to play any games. Cut so. into your bar budget yeah. real quick, man. Um, <laughs> building your first PC. So, I mean, that's good that you're ordering parts. That's a special time. That's a special time. It, it, it's, it's always an adventure. We, we saw we saw Kylinux mm -hmm. uh, make an attempt a couple weeks ago in Discord. Uh, lessons two, learned. Two, le two less than successful yep. results, but, you know, it's, that, it's a learning experience, It doesn't experience, even right? matter. It's the initiative to even, like, yeah. get the ball rolling. I'm like, all right, I'll get it next time. And, and like honestly, a good place to start is just like if you have a pre-built system, just swap out some parts. Like, oh, yeah. I need a new video card. Oh, we need, all start uh, there. Some RAM. Everybody yeah. starts there, yeah. unless you're like one of the kids on RPC Master Races. Like, this is my first build. You know, it's like thirty thousand dollar. Yes. Mm -hmm. Collection that sure. I uh, yeah. watched some YouTuber build, so I just bought the exact same parts. Yeah. Well, my parents bought the exact same parts. My parents <laughs> have an obscenely high credit limit, so. <laughs> but I think most of us, all, I started with a pre-built. Uh, and it was like a beige box pre-built. Then I got my first real PC. I think it might have been like a Hewlett Packard or a Packard Bell or something like that. And of course, you know, it did the upgrades from there. What was the, uh, what? oh, geez, let's date ourselves up for, oh. okay. Okay. Hang on. We, we got to lay the ground rules. All right, all right. Um, we're, we're going to qualify a PC build, meaning that you bought a motherboard, CPU and memory. So first my, one. So my, my first computer was a custom built. It was the system administrator from Thai Canada, the Beanie Baby company, who was friends with my mom, who built me that computer. <laughs> so uh, so my, my, my first personal PC was a custom one. And then, like, like you said, I, I updated, I upgraded memory, hard drives, video cards, because like, yeah, now that I, I have the thing, it's it's mine, I can I can upgrade it. But the first one I built from scratch, I think probably would have been in, in college, because I was, at that point, I was pretty big into laptops, because, mm. Laptop. You know, you're, you're, you're a student, you want to bring your computer around, and yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. what was it, though? Uh, CPU? Uh, it was a Core 2 Quad with, like, it it RAM. Or mm. Yeah. Yeah, the first one that I built myself, uh, everything, I specifically picked the parts and I put them together myself, mm -hmm. was a, a Core 2 Duo. Mm. Uh, what a Conroe series with a Conroe X Fire SATA 2 motherboard, uh, and it had uh, an NVIDIA FX 5600. Okay, two gigabytes of RAM, I think. <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it had like a 160 gigabyte hard drive that was that was the thing so i could have all of the games installed at once okay oh, yeah. I, I remember going from like a 60 gigabyte drive and i'm like oh my god i bought a 200 gigabyte hard drive that's mm -hmm. like three times the space <laughs> and it's all for my simpsons episodes 
Uh, my first build was an AMD because I got the motherboard a K5, not K6, K5. That bitch, uh, I think it was like 133 megahertz or something like that. It was faster than that because we had dip switches on the motherboards uh, back in the day and I could never get the configuration right because it didn't have it for that. It was a different time, kids. And I think it ran at like closer to 200 megahertz, which was kind of wild. Uh, all spinny drives in that. Probably some like 3D plaster video card because I hadn't bought the Voodoo at that point. And um, yeah, so I, I guess that was like 95, 94. It was running yeah, Linux. It was in 2005? 2010-ish yeah. <laughs> for me. Mm. Yeah, you guys, did you guys ever have to deal with dips, which is on motherboards in no. either area? No. Uh, no, I, uh, the, that Conroe X-Fire motherboard had the... You still had to set the... Um, the jumpers on or the jumpers, hard drives because it yeah, was you, uh, ID. Uh, yeah. Ma master master and slave yeah yep remember that mm -hmm. and then wanting to add another one select. and already being a primary master which was the uh, cd drive and the primary slave which was the hard drive and then setting up that one up as the secondary slave it's like ah there we go but you never, <laughs> never spent a weekend trying to figure out why your writer wasn't burning because you didn't put a terminator on the end of the scuzzy cable yeah, <laughs> fun times <laughs> now, yeah now, now you just pull now it's like what do you even need a burner for I just plugged my your hard drive into the motherboard Jordan, for your vintage computer collection. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Listen, I I had to burn all those Simpsons episodes onto VCDs so I could watch them on my PS2. Yeah, man. Whatever, I, I, I burnt DVDs of Enterprise. I mean, it's been it's been a long time getting from there to here. It's been a long road, ladies and gentlemen. We're not gonna do better than that. That's going to wrap us up for tonight. If you want to get a hold to us, uh, come watch us live. We do it at uh, eight thirty Eastern Standard time right here on twitch after the fact watch us wherever we're at we're on spotify we're on any just type in linux gamecast you'll find it but if you want to get in touch with me you can do that i'm on zitter at vinstone and uh, our mastodon instance mass.linuxgamecast.com you can just find me at vin and anywhere else like i'm in our discord always talking smack with these guys and everybody else that's uh an irc in twitch do it I'm a very leaky menace. You can find me leaking all sorts of fluids out of my face on Mastodon. I'm Projo at mastodonlinuxgamecast.com or on Twitter, X, whatever. I'm at, at the Burning Fool. And I am just on Mastodon. It's unaccounted for with the actual number four uh, at mass.linuxgamecast.com. I got tired of waiting for um, Elon to kill there Twitter. There it is. So. I was waiting. He's yeah. not going to get through that with a... <laughs> All right. <laughs> what? I did. Just like, okay, no, this is taking too long. I'm just going to leave. So, yeah, that, that was the end of that. <laughs> Time for some credits. R.I.P. Bob Barker. R.I.P. Bob. The price is always pour, right for you, Bob. Pour, pour one out. Pour one out. <laughs> the realest motherfucker in all game shows. We gotta thank our advisors. We gotta thank Omega Star Theron. We gotta thank executive producers Spark Bramp, Scott Mashota, Tom McCast, Mike G. Drummer, Tomas, Hakim, David, Eshep, and Ian, and our Lil Nick fans. Super Dust Out, Empty, Glorious, Eggy, and Blasmia. Sea Monsters, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Vertanuda, Justin, Nub, and Darkwing, System T, Dunzing, Jew, Ogi One, and Kyrilla. Oh. And it, it, they've gone away. It just doesn't oh, go. Oh. They got sucked into the black hole. <laughs> no. <laughs> I knew, where is that video floating around? Uh, it's probably <laughs> crashing into some planet right now. <laughs> it's gone, man. Um, it's like, it's like, it's like the end of Dragon's Ball you know, P where like the giant Goku just crashes into the planet. This is the point we've been staring out into the void for so long that the void finally looked back. <laughs> okay, we, we gotta investigate this. Like, what happened? <laughs> it just, it no, just no, dead. Oh, yeah. oh, it just oh, dies. All right. Just, okay. All right. Hey, all right. Did, uh, did, did you re-render that file? I render it every week, yeah. So something, okay. something, something yeah. went crazy. Yeah. All oh, of our chairlings and thank you very much, dear Patreon. Are fine, upset cannibals. <laughs> We're gonna get out of oh, here. Yeah. What? What'd you do? At, at least when shit what goes wrong, it goes wrong at the very end of the episode. I mean, you know, progress, yeah. progress. Identify everyone. We'll Bye -bye. see you next week. Bye. Five dudes.